Who were the children of Ivan the Terrible, you ask? Well, let me tell you. He had eight wives. Ivan the Terrible, that fucking piece of shit. You got Vlad the Mad, right? You got Vlad the Mad. He's a fucking terrible pile of shit. But this isn't the first time we've seen Russia produce some terrible fucking leaders. So Ivan the Terrible, my God. He had eight marriages. He married eight women. He married eight women and he still wasn't able to produce a bloodlines that would carry on. Much of it due to his own goddamn fault. So who are the who did he get married to and who's his children? So he's got Anastasia Romanovna, Romanovna, and then Maria Timryukovna, then Marfa, good old Marfa. So Bakini, Anna Koltovskaya, Anna Vasilchikova, Vasilisa Mel. Melenti Eva, Maria Dolgorukaya, Maria Nagaya, Maria Nagaya, Maria Nagaya. So those are the eight wives, and with a bunch of them he didn't have any kids with, so we'll kind of put them to the side. He had children with three of them, two of them he had one child apiece, and then one of them he had six children. So Ivan the Terrible, this is going to be the, Ivan the Terrible represents the decline of the Rurik dynasty and the incline, the rise of the Romanov dynasty. So the house of Romanov is going to rise with Ivan the Fourth, not because of him, he's terrible. Rurik dynasty is going to die with Ivan the Fourth, but because he had married Anastasia Romanov, Romanovna, the house of Romanov is going to carry on. And so, you see, let's talk about the single ones, and then we'll talk about the individual ones. So you had his first wife, and he loved Anastasia, apparently, Ivan the Terrible. For 13 years, he, you know, married her, loved her. They had six years, and then, um, you know, just uh, kind of went, uh, kind of went just straight into the toilet, you know, just uh, didn't really go. No, I'm just, uh, sorry. Anastasia Romanov, no, she had six kids. There was, um, Anna Ivanov, uh, Ivanov, Ivanovna, well, just Anna, Maria, Dmitri, Ivan, Edoxia, and Fyodor the First. Fyodor the First. Remember that name, because he's going to become Tsar. The last child. The last child of six is going to become Tsar. So those are the six kids of Anastasia Romanovna. Now, there was one kid by Maria Timryukovna, who is Vasily Ivanovich. Maria, so Vasily, there's a Vasily out there. Nope, he died within a month. So, okay, a lot of these, you know, children are dying just basically in the very beginning in childbirth. Maria Nagaya is a widow. Dimitri, she's going to have Dimitri, so his last wife. He was able to bear a child with his last wife, and his last child is a son. It's a son, the future king of Russia. But he's going to get, uh, he's going to either die, he had a, a seizure where he stabbed himself, or he uh, got killed by some, you know, internal, you know, shit. So, uh, Dmitri is only going to live to be eight or nine years old. Then you had Vasily. Vasily, you know, lived to be a month. You had Anna. Anna lived only two years, less than two years. Maria, she died young. Dimitri, he's going to die young, less than one years old. Ivan, Ivan is the uh, fifth. So this is Ivan the Terrible is Ivan the fourth. Ivan the fifth is going to live. So Fyodor the first wasn't going to be the czar, but until Ivan the fourth killed Ivan the fifth, because he's a fucking punk ass bitch motherfucker. That's why. So Ivan the Fourth is going to kill Ivan the Fifth. If Ivan the Fifth would have lived, then perhaps the you know Ivan the Terrible's his uh, fucking reign and his personage and his legacy wouldn't have been so completely fucking awful. Then you had Edoxia, who is going to die within less than two years. So that's all you got really is three. You got three children that are of uh, importance. You have Ivan the Fifth, Fyodor the First. And Dmitri Ivanovich, two of them from Anastasia Romanovna, and one of them from Maria Nagaya, from Maria Nagaya. Now there's 
Um, you have, right, these three left. So you have Dimitri, who's eight years old. When Ivan IV dies, Dimitri is only, you know, just a child. So they're, he's going to be put into some sort of thing. And then it's going to be, I'll, I'll talk about the eight-year-old Dimitri here in a second. Because, well, I'll talk about it in a second. First, let's uh, talk about the Ivan V. So there was an argument. This fucking Ivan the Terrible first, you know, he, you know, gives a wife to his son, but his son just loves his wives too goddamn much and he keeps on banishing his wives to the nunnery. He got his, you know, son a wife, married her, you know, married them off, and then um, it was, did something to where, you know, brought about a divorce. Because the argument when uh, Ivan V is going to get killed, the argument between Ivan IV and Ivan V is this. You've already ruined my first wife. You done sent her away. My second wife, you done sent her away. Now you're attacking my third wife, and she's already miscarried the baby. So now she does. She's not even gonna carry on the the lineage. You know, you pile of shit. You fucking evil, terrible motherfucker. He already destroyed one of his fucking sons' relationships. Destroyed two of his sons' relationships. And then, you know, once he got rid of two wives, and then the third wife, he was sitting there attacking. And finally, the son had enough. What the fuck you doing there, Papa? What the fuck, you motherfucker? You just killed my goddamn kids, you motherfucker, piece of shit. Ivan is fucking terrible. Like, what Putin did in Grozny is like what Ivan did in Novgorod. Novgorod is the father of the Russian people, but guess what Ivan the Terrible did in Novgorod? He flattened the fuck out of it. Just kept massacring the shit out of... The massacre of Novgorod is very much the massacre of Maripol and the massacre of, you know, the the rest of them, Donbass region and the Lviv and Odessa and Kiev. Three of them were allegedly poisoned by his enemies, so that's what he thought happened to Anastasia, that she was poisoned. He's going to kill, he's going to take a, a rod, some sort of iron rod, and hit his son. Ivan IV hits Ivan V in the head, and then he goes into a coma, and then he dies. And there's, like, artists, there's this, you know, Ivan the Terrible and his son Ivan, where he's, like, crying, and he's just holding his son, and he's just, like, so sad and just, you know, so small. Fucking Ivan the Terrible, you done brought, uh, you know, you brought your own downfall, you fucking piece of shit. This is what the Rurik dynasty, this is what the Spanish Vikings, this is the Kievan Rus, the legacy of the Kievan Rus. This is the shit that Putin wants to carry on. Fucking shit, man. Leave me out of it. I don't want this, none of this goddamn legacy. So that brings us now to the last two sons. He killed, you know, one of the three sons. Now you have Fyodor the First. And Dmitry Ivanovich. Fyodor is going to become the czar. He's not like the worst czar ever. It's just that he has no kids. And so therefore the bloodlines don't carry on. And then he had a regent. Fyodor I had a regent. Which you know basically he kind of knew the ins and outs of government. And as long as he had the confidence of Fyodor. Then he could run Russia. And that regent is going to be said to have killed Dmitry. And the regent is going to become the czar after Fyodor. So this is uh, the Ivan the Terrible. Because he didn't have a good secession. That's the, the War of Austrian secession. There's Charles VI. He had Maria. He only had a, he had three daughters. And so, you know, back then it was, you know, what? You're going to have a woman is going to be emperor. A woman is going to be emperor. Get the hell out of here. A woman is going to be emperor. And so Maria Teresa, they said that uh, basically they just want to tack her claims to legitimacy to the throne, even though Charles VI had set this shit up. Yeah, that she's my eldest daughter. She's the fucking queen. She runs shit. Yeah, but we're a bunch of patriarchal, sexist fucking pieces of shit. So, you know, Maria Teresa was pretty mad about her, you know, them attacking her and her, but that's what they do, right? When you get a brand new leader in there, you have the rest of the world try to challenge your claim to what the fuck ever. So let's hurry up and get this done. Uh, Fyodor the First is going to run shit. So the very final, you know, after Ivan the Fifth is killed, the last one we got is Fyodor the First. Fyodor the First. He knew this guy named Boris Godunov. Boris Godunov. Godunov. Apparently, he was, you know, Boris and Natasha of the Bullwinkle. The um, what something in Bullwinkle show? Rocky. The Rocky and Bullwinkle show. So you have, uh, there's two possible scenarios of what could have happened to Dmitri. The first theory is that Dmitri was killed by the order of Boris Godunov. 
The assassin's making it look like an accident. I think it's very likely that Boris Godunov probably did kill the eight-year-old kid. He's an eight-year-old. He had survived, you know, infancy. And then he had actually arrested him and then put him into, you know, some fucking hole or some shit. So he was under the, um, let's see, in, in 1584, Godunov sent Dmitry and his mother and her brothers into internal exile in the Tsarevich's uh, Pandage city of Uglitz. That, yeah, it's uh, the crown prince. That's what started World War I was some Serb named Gavrilo, not Prince Seep or Philip, maybe Prince Seep, <laughs> not Philip, but Prince Seep. So Gavrilo Prince Seep, a Serbian is going to kill the crown prince of Austria-Hungary. Uh, and then the Austria-Hungarian Empire is going to uh, issue an ultimatum. And then, you know, that's going to lead to World War I. But they killed a crown prince. That's what the fuck Ivan IV just did. When Ivan IV killed Ivan V, that's when the Russian people, the fucking Senate, the fucking whoever, who the fuck ever, you know, cared about the leadership of Russia, cared about... That's when they should have got rid of him. You just killed the crown prince? You're not fit to be a, a father, let alone the ruler of a nation. So just interesting, oh, you killed the crown prince? We're going to, you know, issue all of Serbia an ultimatum for the horrible, dastardly deed of killing a crown prince. But when Ivan IV killed the crown prince, Russians didn't do shit. So, um, internal exile in the Zavarovich's appendage city of Uglich. And then May 15th, 1591, Dmitry died there under mysterious circumstances. So, the, you know, Godonov, it was under his care, under his, you know, responsibility, all oops. Yeah, he just had an epileptic, uh, an epileptic seizure, and he stabbed himself in the throat, because that happens all the fucking time. He's playing with a knife, and he had a seizure, and then just started shaking, and then started stabbing himself in the neck. You know, oh, it gave himself a mortal fucking blow. Get the fuck out of here. That is so stupid. So, I, it's pretty clear to me that that motherfucker killed him. I mean, look at the shit that's happening, right? Ivan the Terrible, this is the legacy he fucking left because he didn't have a clear line of secession. Look at all these bastards all fucking trying to fight for... And then because Dimitri died at eight or nine years old, you're going to have a lot of false Dimitris that pop up in Russian history say, no, I'm the real Dimitri. No, I'm the real Dimitri. No, I'm the real Dimitri. So, there's a third version, apparently, that found some support with earlier historians, and um, they considered it possible that Go Denov's people had tried to assassinate Dmitri, but killed somebody else instead, and, the, and he managed to escape. Well, that's quite fascinating. They tried to kill the kid, and then the kid ran off. <laughs> Oops. Shit. There's some nine-year-old out in the woods somewhere. I can't find him. He hid under a branch. This scenario explains the appearance of imposter, sponsored by the Polish nobility, the false Dimitri 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> Are you the false Dimitri? I'm false Dimitri number 2. I'm not the... I'm false Dimitri number 3. Um... <laughs> They say that uh, Dimitri's survival is very improbable. Yeah, I don't believe that. So I believe the first theory is most likely you had uh, that God did enough. He fucking put, a, you know, his mother and her brothers in the city of Uglich. And then all of a sudden he just died there under mysterious circumstances. The only uh, claim to the throne would have been from Dimitri. So by getting rid of Dimitri, then there would be no possible claim to the throne. Apparently there's a, a criticism of that was that you only had a maximum of three marriages were allowed in the Russian Orthodox Church. So since Ivan the Terrible had eight marriages, therefore Dmitri had no claims to the throne. But, you know, the first male heir or whatever, so the if what's his fucking face, you know, had died. Fyodor, if Fyodor had died and Dmitri was still around, Dmitri would get the throne, right? That's uh, That makes sense to me. So I think that... Um, in spite of the fucking three marriage rule. Or there had been, you know, Dimitri would have raised an army or some shit. Who knows? And then maybe Dimitri did leave, live. But I feel like the reason why I don't believe that is because people just want, you know, famous people to stick around forever and ever. So it kind of reminds me of um, Anastasia. The Bolsheviks are going to kill the Romanovs. And then, you know, Anastasia still lived. The whole movie of Anastasia, I think, is about Anastasia still living from that. 
Tupac's still alive. Elvis is still alive. People love these, you know, people. And then they get shot and killed. And it's like, fuck, we loved you. And we want you to still be around. So, you know, that's why you'll see false uh, Elvis and false Tupac pop up. And um, I think that's about it. That's uh, how many kids did Ivan the Terrible have? He had, how many kids did he have? He had eight kids, right? He had eight wives and eight kids. Six kids from one wife, one kid from uh, one wife and one kid from another wife. And then five marriages ended off with, you know, no children. So um, it says here. Ivan the Terrible is a son of Vasily the Third. That's not what I asked. He had eight children and seven wives. Only three of his wives bore him children. Most of his children died in infancy by his first wife, Anastasia Romanovna. He had six kids, four of, who, four of whom died very young, one who died at the age of 26 after his father struck him. You 26-year-old? What a pile of shit. And he had argued about, you know, some argument with Pol, uh, P-S-T-O-K. Pistock, the Battle of Pistock. Well, you should have just gave me an army and I would have won at the Battle of Pistock. You shut your mouth. Because he had fucked up in war. He made a big mistake. He lost the battle. And, and he wasn't saying, I'm undermining you. And he was like, well, it's your fault. You tried to, you know, cause a rebellion. And try to cause a rebellion, motherfucker. But I would have fucking won the damn thing. Give me a goddamn army and I would have won. Oh, you think I made a mistake? Pow. Now you're dead. How dare you disagree with me? And then as his final lines, Ivan V's final words was, I was always a good and dutiful and obedient son. I was always a good and dutiful, obedient son, 26 years of age. Yeah, good job, Ivan the fucking terrible, the one motherfucker that you should have listened to, the one that adored the shit out of you. And he was probably right. Give him the army, he would have won in, you know, Piscos, pis whatever. So... <laughs> Ivan had one child by his second wife, Maria Timriukovna. It died just a few months of age. He also had one child by his seventh and final wife, Maria Nagaya. This child, Dimitri, died at the age of eight. So there you go. Ivan the Terrible. These are the fucking royal families all of Russia looks up to. All of Russia is like, you know what? We need more Ivan the Terribles. We need more Ivan the Terribles. This is fucking Russia. You need an Ivan the Terrible to run a goddamn Russia. You need him to be bloody, psychotic, sick, fucking pile of shit, disgusting, fucking low-life degenerate, motherfucking bloody fucking loser. You need a person that's going to destroy the bloodlines. You need someone who's going to destroy the country and destroy the bloodlines. Right, Russia? That's why you're doing all this shit. That's why you're doing all this shit, because you have Ivan the Terrible in your fucking history. You got Ivan the Terrible in your fucking bloodstreams. Goddamn motherfucking Rasputin motherfuckers. Fucking Rasputin motherfuckers.